Hey y'all and welcome back to Carbon Scoring, the best place for comics history and action figures. And boy, we're going to prove it to you today because we've got another Marvel Legends mystery box. And this one is really special because if you're new to the channel, what we do is we take a box full of my toys, action figures that I've collected over the decades, and we crack it open and we take a look at what's inside, go figure by figure, dig into some of the comic history of that character, talk about the history of the action figures, and we have a good time. But this box is different because I let you guys select who we're going to be talking about today. I posted a poll on my YouTube page and gave you the choice between looking at a box full of Toy Biz Iron Man figures, Hasbro Iron Man figures, or Deadpool figures. But thankfully, overwhelmingly, you guys chose Daredevil figures. And I can't be more excited because Daredevil has some of the greatest comic history. Some of the greatest artists and writers ever have worked on the book. And we're going to dig into all of that stuff. And at the very end of this video, I've got a figure down at the bottom of this box that was part of a line of toys that's what really got me serious about collecting action figures in the first place. So I can't wait to share that with you. So without further ado, let's crack open this box and see what's inside. <laughs> Look at all of those gorgeous Daredevil figures. I mean, that red just really pops right out of the box. So let's see what we've got. Okay, so this is a Mego Daredevil figure. And no, you're not losing your mind. The Mego Corporation did not release Daredevil back in the 1970s during its original run. This is a reproduction figure that came out from Diamond Select Toys, uh, I guess within the past 10 years or so. It's really faithful. It's on that original Mego Type 1 body so it's right at that eight inch scale and he's got a great you know cloth costume actually has a little bit of that kind of faux leather to his gloves and he has you know rubberized boots so this has actually got a little bit better qualities than what we would see with those original Mego figures but I love that head sculpt that's such he almost has a little smirk uh, like Matt Murdock does but the cool thing about this figure was yeah you got the Daredevil figure but it also came with outfits which let you make a Matt Murdock with his glasses and the original Daredevil costume. So just to give you a little background, if you're not as familiar with Daredevil as a character, Daredevil's name is Matt Murdock. And as a child, he was blinded while he was trying to help an old man get across the street and a can of radiation blasted out of the back of a truck and it cost him his sight. But when it did that, it enhanced all of his other senses. So he has super hearing, super smell, and it gave him this incredibly special radar sense. And I think I've got a, here we go. Here is one of Hasbro's most up-to-date Daredevil figures, one of the newest figures. And I've got a radar sense accessory that came from Customizer Can of Beams. And so I'll leave a link to that in the description. But what this did was it basically gave Daredevil the ability to see using his radar senses. He had a, a, a sonar, and so he was able to kind of use sounds and things to bounce back at him to see the world around him. And so he went on to you know develop those superpowers, and we'll talk about how that happened uh, as we get on in the, uh, in the video. But that's a little background on Daredevil. Of course, Daredevil came out in the early 1960s with Marvel. He came out right around the same time as Spider-Man and Fantastic Four and Hulk. And if you remember, all of those characters, they got their powers from radiation. Spider-Man was bitten by a radioactive spider. The Fantastic Four were irradiated by cosmic rays on a space flight. The Hulk was blasted when a gamma radiation bomb went off. So Stan Lee, who was the writer for those tales was really kind of playing on the fears at the time that radiation and nuclear war was kind of the big fear back in the 1960s. So I wonder if there was a new Stan Lee today, like what would be the thing that we're all afraid of? Would like, would everything be about social media? Would like everybody have like, would you have like the speed of Twitter or the evil power of, of Facebook to spread misinformation? I don't know if that was, if we were reinventing things today, would they all look like that? 
but that's a really cool radar sense effect, and I love that on this most recent Hasbro Daredevil figure. But let's go back to the beginning and look at a couple of figures that show Daredevil in his original costume. I can see a couple in here. They really stand out because he's wearing this crazy brown and yellow suit. So this was how Daredevil first appeared in the comics. It's it's not... Okay, it's kind of terrible. I've said before, this is the suit that only a blind man would design. It has almost like a wrestling, you know, like singlet over the top. The colors are like incredibly garish. And, you know, it's just kind of a crazy looking, looking suit. Now, this is one of Hasbro's early daredevil figures but they did as a walgreens exclusive release daredevil again in his original suit so this is the exact same figure as the one that we just saw with the radar sense attachment but it's much more accurate because unlike this figure which was just a repaint of a red daredevil we'll see somewhere in that box this one actually got a new paint sculpt paint sculpt paint application and it had just the single d on the chest, which is what Daredevil actually looked like in those very first appearances. It wasn't the double D uh, that came along a little bit later. So there's Daredevil's kind of first appearance outfit. So we showed you a fake 1970s figure. Let's actually go back to the very first Daredevil figure ever made, and it came in Mattel's Superhero Secret Wars line. So this figure is from 1984, 1985. This was in this, let's see if it has a date on it. You may be able to see that. I think it says 84. So this came from the Secret Wars line, the second series of Secret Wars figures. And if you remember, almost all of those, or all of those figures came with a lenticular shield that was kind of their gimmick. And you can see how it changes pictures. And there's a couple of other images that are in there. They also mostly use the same body mold. So they all kind of had roughly the same size, whether you were Captain America or you were Spider-Man or you're Daredevil. The good news for Daredevil is it fits. It's actually a really good body mold for Daredevil. But one of the things that's, you know, the most hilarious is Daredevil didn't appear in the Secret Wars comic. He, he wasn't even in there. And you know, there were several figures from the line, particularly in that second series, like Hobgoblin, and then even some of the, the only released in Europe figures like Electro and Iceman and Constrictor that didn't appear anywhere in the Secret Wars comics. So, but this from 1984 was the very first Daredevil action figure that we ever got. And looking down in here, uh, this is this one's an early one too. Uh, there's another one that came out not too long ago. Let's let's look at this one. So this is from the Spider-Man animated line. And I apologize. At some point back in the 90s or early 2000s, I thought he would look better with white eyes. So that's not original. That's something silly that I did. But this was the Spider-Man animated line when Toy Biz was really first starting to think about increasing articulation, moving from five and six point of articulation to things that had more ball jointed hips and arms. And of course, that really works for Daredevil because he's an acrobat. And so you really need more of this articulation. You can see it's kind of wonky. These hips don't really work very well. But Daredevil appeared on the Spider-Man animated cartoon that was on the Fox Kids Network. He never was a strong enough character to have his own cartoon like Hulk or Iron Man or the Fantastic Four or even Silver Surfer had his own cartoon. So Daredevil kind of always appeared in somebody else's cartoon. And so he popped up in that line because of that. Uh, let's let's look at some of the accessory characters that come with Daredevil, some of the some of the bad guys. And one of the characters who's most closely associated with Daredevil is his former love interest, Natasha Romanoff. And this was a five-inch Toy Biz figure. Looks like it's dated 1997. And I think that this one was like one of their comic shop exclusive ones because it has these soft goods, this soft good Avengers uh, uh, leather jacket on her. So it's kind of cool because when I first started reading Daredevil, this was the look that Natasha had as Black Widow. It was the gray costume with the widow symbol uh, on her chest there. And, we, oh, we do, we have another one. So here is another version of that, uh, a Hasbro version. I like this because she's got the short hair. You can see both of these kind of have the shorter hairstyle. Ooh, look how good 
that Widow is on the back. But this uh, came, I think this came in a two-pack during sort of that time when Hasbro really didn't know what to do with the Marvel Legends line. And But I'm so glad that they gave us this because that is a super cool Black Widow figure. And there's probably, there's going to be more Widows down in here somewhere. Oh, here's the one that I was looking for. So this is probably our second Daredevil figure. And so Toy Biz actually got the rights to do Marvel figures in the in right around 1990. And Daredevil was in one of their initial lineups. And this is where you can see mostly just the five points of articulation. You know, it's got hips, it's got a head swivel. It, it has, you know, kind of this really sort of bulky chest. I, this was a very similar figure to the size that they made for Spider-Man, which I didn't love. I, it just seems too, too bulky. But you can see how Toy Biz then managed to increase the articulation and make Daredevil look a little bit more proportionally heroic as they went on. Um, Daredevil, let's look at some more bad guys. So Typhoid Mary, ooh, that is a great figure from Hasbro. So she appeared during the 80s in Daredevil, and she's actually had a resurgence and has been really active in the comics lately. In fact, she's kind of having a an affair with the Kingpin in the books that are written by Chip Zardstee right now. And if you're not reading Daredevil right now, I definitely recommend it. It's a, it is a good book. Now, Daredevil himself has seen uh, a lot of different versions. This is actually one of my favorite ones. This is from Toy one of Toy Biz's final action figures before the line switched over to Hasbro. This is from their Face Off series. And so this came as a two-pack where Daredevil was paired with Kingpin. And again, they really tried to give him those super athletic, super bendable shoulders. I think it takes away a little bit from the sculpt, just how wide these shoulders are. But I love this head sculpt with Matt Murdock with his glasses on. So this was the alternate version, and he came with the black-suited kingpin in that set. This is the, the white-suited kingpin from that face-off line, but these two guys came together in that set. Coming back to Daredevil's red costume. So he started out with that yellow and brown costume, and the book just wasn't really selling. You know, Marvel only had a few books on the line at the time. They had a crazy distribution deal with DC where they could only publish like 18 books in a month. And so if you weren't a hit, you were pretty much going to get dropped. And Daredevil was very much at risk of cancellation. And so Stan Lee brought in the incredible artist extraordinaire, Wally Wood, to take over the book. And I think he made him some promises of creative control and things like that. And so Wally kind of jumped in. Now, Wally Wood is one of the greatest illustrators in comics history. And he's super famous for his work on the EC horror titles and some science fiction stuff. And so when Wally Wood came in, he didn't like Daredevil's costume. He thought it was terrible. And so for issue seven, he came up with the now iconic red suit for Daredevil. And this is actually a diamond select figure. So this is like in the seven inch scale. It's a little bit bigger than our six inch Marvel Legends, but it's a great overall representation of what Wally Wood did. And apparently he just turned the book in. He didn't even tell Stan that he had changed Daredevil's costume. He just, he just turned it in with this great costume. And this costume lasted for like 300 issues. It was issue seven when he switched to the red costume and it was like issue 337 before Daredevil had another costume change. So that's one of the most iconic looks in all of Marvel history and it's pretty well represented right there. So let's talk about what the next costume was. And it is so gloriously given to us here with the armored version of Daredevil. So this was in the 80s, somewhere in the early 300s. Daredevil was in a fight with Silver Sable and her wolf pack or whatever they're called, and they kind of destroyed his suit, and I think he was injured. And so he put together this armored suit. And this toy, this action figure is really great. I love that metallic shine on the red. I love how he has his billy clubs here mounted to his wrists. And one of the great things was this came in Marvel's retro line. And so here's the packaging for this. You actually get a Matt Murdock head, some extra billy clubs, uh, different fist. Really, really well done and just a spectacular 
Daredevil figure. Funnily enough, they actually did do a version of this costume with these early 90s Marvel Toy Biz figures. I don't have it, but this is not the first time that this costume has appeared in toy form. It actually appeared on this sculpt as well, which is which is pretty cool. Now, DD, while he hasn't been as popular as the X-Men or Spider-Man, he has made his way onto film and on the silver screen. And he, in the very first Daredevil movie, you had Ben Affleck playing Daredevil. And he even got his own Marvel Legends figure. Now, when this Marvel Legends figure came out, it, clearly it's got way less articulation. It just has simple joints, simple shoulders and hips. I imagine, I don't know this for sure, but I imagine that this was going to be part of a movie line that just never got off the ground. Maybe the movie wasn't deemed popular enough. Maybe the other characters weren't good enough. And so they shifted it over since they had already sculpted and created this and put it in the, the Marvel Legends line. It doesn't really fit in with the Marvel Legends. It fits better with like the X-Men movie figures of that era. But it's actually a really accurate representation of Daredevil in the movie. And I think you can see it. I don't think you have to really squint that looks like Ben Affleck. I mean, that really does. They really did capture what Ben Affleck looked like in the movie. So from there, Daredevil was really the star of Netflix's first series of shows that uh, were on the streaming service. And this was the appearance that he had at the very end of the first ep the first season. And then I think he wore this throughout the rest of the second season. And let me tell you, this thing for a $20 action figure is incredibly detailed and so faithful to the show. There's even like a little bit of a gloss over his eyes. So when you look at him, when he looks at you or when, he, when you're looking at this figure, you can kind of see how those eyes shine. That's a nice little touch. Plus, all of these armor details are just so perfect down to even like the mesh on the suit of, of his armor. So... This this Netflix Daredevil, I think, is a really, really fantastic figure. And they actually made a Hot Toys version of this, which is right here. So here is your Hot Toys Netflix Daredevil. Again, you know, I, I mean, it's a Hot toy, so it's, you know, super, super detailed. He comes with Billy Clubs. He's got his nunchucks with an actual, like, metal wire connection. I think his hand probably fell off in the box. He had two different head sculpts. This is the alternate one that shows him kind of bleeding and beat up. I always like that one better. But honestly, if you're going to ask me, there, there is no doubt this is a better figure for the, for the money than what you got from this one. I actually think this one in some ways has more detail, is even more screen accurate than this Hot Toys figure. And I, I recognize that that's blasphemy, but... I really love that Netflix Daredevil. I see a bunch of him. So let's grab Daredevil's number one bad guy and look at some of the different bullseye figures that have come out over time. So here is the first Toy Biz bullseye. And whoo, that is an ugly, ugly dude. Bullseye is so important that he came out fairly early in Toy Biz's Marvel Legends run. Uh, he had a... Um, an even uglier alternate version that came out after this. This looks like it's actually just the exact same character, so I just happen to have two of that bullseye. Oh, here we go. Here is an older bullseye. So here is a Toy Biz 5-inch bullseye. Look at this fella right here. I mean, he is absolutely up to no good. But you can see he's kind of on, I would assume this is probably a Punisher body, because look, that just looks exactly like the Punisher that they just sort of repainted and gave us a Daredevil, or excuse me, a Bullseye with. But still, that's pretty cool. So 90s Bullseye. And then here is, here are a couple of versions of Bullseye in the Marvel Universe line. I don't, whoops, I don't know which one came first. I do think that I like this one better with the more maniacal, the the smiling kind of look. We'll talk about uh, Bullseye's history as we go. He is just a, a killer, just an absolute killer. And he killed one of the most famous people that's in this box, you know, coming up. And oh, here's another one. Yeah, here we go. Here is the most recent 
bullseye. This is from the new three and three quarter inch retro line. So back to that more simple articulation, but they still give him a ton of personality in here. I really think of this line as what really is the successor of the Secret Wars line. And I can't wait to get more and more of these retro three and three quarter inch figures as we go along. But Hasbro really basically gave us the definitive bullseye figure. And look at this dude. Perfect facial sculpt, great proportions. He has a very accurate costume. And he even came with this cool hand where he's throwing knives. So it's got this this tossing knives effect coming out. I love this bullseye. I think it's just the absolute perfect version of the character. So Daredevil was a pretty lame character. I mean, he was legitimately C-list, basically from the time Wally Wood left the book. And I think after designing Daredevil's costume, Wally left because he was uh, upset with Stan maybe not keeping some of his promises of creative control and giving him kind of the the payment for creating the stories and doing most of the writing. That's a, a recurrent theme uh, with Stan. But Daredevil went through a lengthy period of time where he was just lame. And so they handed the book over to an aspiring writer artist named Frank Miller. And Frank Miller changed everything about Daredevil. One of the very first things that he did was he introduced the character Elektra. So here is Elektra. This is uh, Diamond Select Elektra, and actually one of the very first of the uh, Diamond Select figures. She actually came with a separate, you, because she has no articulation below the waist, she came with a different body. You could pop it off and have more of a standing pose. But Elektra Nachos was a Greek exchange student who came to college and met Matt Murdock and his best friend, Foggy Nelson, and Matt and Electra fell in love. And they were just inseparable. Matt still had his superpowers. He, you know, he had his radar sense and everything, but he, he wasn't a superhero yet. He was still kind of trying to figure out who he was going to become. And during that time... Uh, Electra's father was an ambassador and he was murdered. And so Electra went back to Greece never to be seen again until all of a sudden during Frank Miller's run, she shows up in the book trying to kill Foggy Nelson. And she recognizes Foggy from college and decides not to kill him. And then her and Matt just absolutely, well, they go at it in every way that you can think of. But they... um they recognize each other and and go from kind of enemies to frenemies. This is actually the first Toy Biz Electra. Again, it's kind of got those wonky female arms. Check out what they were trying to do with hip articulation. I mean, just, you know, took a little while to get some stuff figured out, but but they did. But this is, you know, this was still, you know, again, Electra was considered such an important character. Her and Bullseye showed up early in the Marvel Legends run. I hate that early Toy Biz neck. I try to keep their head sort of down to cover up that joint because I just don't like the way that cut looks there. But then, you know, here is here is Hasbro's earliest attempt at Electra. <sighs> this was when Hasbro had forgotten that paint wash existed, and so many of these faces were just not great. And so this Electra came in a two pack as well, and she came with the hand ninjas. So we'll talk about them here in just a second. But they really did Hasbro just like they did with Bullseye. I cannot imagine a better Electra than this most recent figure. I mean, the proportions are great. She's muscular without looking silly. She has the advanced hip articulation, which will allow her to pose in any kind of action pose. She has that steely-eyed look of an assassin, but she's still beautiful and has those features that are just very, very classic for Electra. that black hair. This piece, I, I think this is a masterpiece of six-inch action figures. So Electra was just a, a complete revelation in the book. And uh, Frank Miller realized that she was actually becoming more popular than Daredevil and Bullseye killed her. He ran her through with her own weapon, her size. And it's one of the most 
iconic moments in comic book history. Uh, it, it just, it really cemented that run as being just an absolute masterpiece in, in comics. Uh, Electra was too popular to stay dead. She's come back alive. And actually currently in the books, she is Daredevil. And I would bet that within the next year, we're going to get a Electra as Daredevil action figure. But uh, Frank Miller, his run on Daredevil was brilliant. This is that early Hasbro Daredevil. I love this figure. I like how he's thin. He looks kind of like a gymnast. You know, Daredevil doesn't have super strength. So he's just you know, a human with these super senses. And I think that this figure actually captures that better than some of the more muscular figures. And, and that's one of the reasons why this is the figure that I keep down in my display in the Secret Lounge, uh, because I love it so much. But another concept that Frank Miller introduced into Daredevil's mythos were the hand. And so the hand were a group of ninjas that actually they were fighting Elektra, and then they ended up becoming enemies with Daredevil, and over the course of time, uh, Daredevil has taken over the hand. These are the old hand figures from early Hasbro. This was the alternate version that came in those two packs, and then this is the most recent hand ninja that uh, appeared uh, in the Stiltman wave that we'll talk about here in just a second. Great, great army building ninja figure. And fun fact, if you're a fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you probably are aware that the number one enemy that they fight are the foot. And that is a direct ripoff of Frank Miller's hand ninjas. They, uh, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird loved Daredevil. They loved what Frank Miller was doing. And they tried to copy as much as they could. And so they named their enemies the foot after Daredevil's enemies, the hand. So a little fun fact with that. So this is a relatively new figure and uh, came as a, an army builder in Hasbro's Stilt Man Wave. Holy cow, we actually got a Stilt Man figure. Look at this thing. This is one of the doofier villains of all time. And he totally fit in with 1960s and 70s Daredevil. Just just pathetic, just a total loser of a bad guy. But look at how awesome this figure is. And I love that they gave him these great stilt legs. And I love even more, and I want to say it out loud to say thank you to Hasbro, that what they did was the army building figure of this wave, the figure that you would consider buying multiple ones of, came with the leg extensions. So if you ended up buying more than one hand ninja, you could actually make Stiltman really as tall as you possibly wanted him to be. So for such a doofy, doofy loser of a character, it is a fantastic action figure. His gun looks exactly like it's always been drawn in the comics. I love Stiltman. Now, the other thing that Frank Miller did was he took Daredevil seriously. He actually really made him gritty and you know he placed him firmly in hell's kitchen uh to give him like a sense of his own place in the marvel universe and they stole as many good spider-man villains as they could so the kingpin seen here in his original build a figure form was a spider-man villain he first appeared in amazing spider-man number 50 i believe but he has since then become the you know big you know lead antagonist for Daredevil. And God, this figure just is an absolute perfect kingpin. In fact, in the Daredevil movie, in the Daredevil Netflix show, it's kingpin that, that Daredevil is having to deal with. So that was another move that Frank Miller made to really kind of give Daredevil a real sense of place in the Marvel Universe that has, has carried on ever since. Now, Frank Miller wasn't the only great artistic team on Daredevil. And this figure really reminds me of a very specific era in Marvel. So right around the early 2000s, Marvel was bankrupt. I mean, things were bad. And so they were willing to bring in new talent to just try to liven things up. And one of the people that they brought in was Joe Casada, the artist. And they gave him the rights to, or they gave him the power to have a Marvel Knights imprint and told him, you can take any character that we are not currently publishing and run with it. Try to make it good. And so they published an incredible Inhumans book. They published a really wacky Punisher book. But Casada himself said, well, 
the character that's not being published that I want to run with is Daredevil. And so he became the lead artist on Daredevil. And I really think that this head sculpt from the Wave 2 of the Spider-Man Classics line back in like 2001 looks so much like what Joe Casada drew Daredevil as. Now, the other cool thing about that run was Casada drew it, but he needed a writer. And so he brought in the filmmaker Kevin Smith uh, from Clerks and Chasing Amy and Mall Rats and had him write the book. And they reinvigorated Daredevil. They brought back uh, Karen Page. They had uh, Bullseye come back. Uh, Bullseye killed Karen Page. They really kind of got into Daredevil's faith and how his faith influences, his Catholic faith influences him as a character. And that book jump-started Marvel. And it certainly jump-started Joe Quesada, who went on to become Marvel's editor-in-chief, largely based off the success that he had with the Marvel Knights imprint. So whenever I see this figure, I always think of that. Now, the, uh, after that, We've had some some pretty great artists and writers on Daredevil. The team that took over immediately after um, Casada and Smith was Brian Michael Bendis. And I don't know why I'm holding this figure because this doesn't have anything to do with Brian Michael Bendis's run. But Brian Michael Bendis and artist Alex um, Malev created just an incredible Daredevil run, one that uh, is still you know regarded as one of the best today. Uh, and then. Following that, we had like a Shadowland series where Hell's Kitchen kind of got taken over by the Hand Ninjas and then Daredevil became the, the leader of the Hand and he was wearing this black suit and you can see kind of has a little bit of a different logo on it. So I think this is really supposed to represent the Shadowland Daredevil. I just love how freaking awesome this Billy Club is. Look at how great this accessory is, you know, just flying off. And this actually came from Hasbro. This is not from a, a secondary source, so... Really, really cool. Again, Daredevil has not had many costume changes, but there's the Shadowland Daredevil. And I think... No, I don't think I... Oh, yes, I do. That's right. Well, that's really just more of a, a darker Daredevil in the Marvel Legends line. Let's look at a few more of those. So we do have... This came from the, the Marvel, Marvel Universe series, the three and three quarter scale. And gosh, that's good. Look at how much detail they're able to get into that small of a Daredevil figure. It's really pretty fantastic. And then I love my new Marvel Retro Daredevil. So we've already gotten Daredevil, Elektra, and Bullseye in this line. Pretty fantastic representation of someone who went from a C-list character to an A-list character. So here are the two versions of Daredevil that appeared in the face-off line. You had the masked version and the unmasked version. Always love it when the unmasked version comes with, you know, the mask kind of draped around. This is a really, really cool Daredevil figure. I have two of them, obviously, but just the shoulders are the only thing that really kind of keeps it from being absolutely top-notch because I do love that head sculpt on that Daredevil. This is another Toy Biz Daredevil that came, I think this one probably came in the Spider-Man line as well, kind of in the Spider-Man subsets. Again, Daredevil's a gymnast, and so he's going to have big shoulders, but not quite like this. And they went a little crazy on the wash around the eyes. So good figure, getting closer, but I still think that maybe as far as Daredevil figures go, this early Hasbro figure is probably one of the top ones. It just... It's the right frame. It's a good sculpt. It has plenty of articulation. Granted, it has kind of the older version of the ball-jointed hips, but I just really, really like this Daredevil figure. So before we get down to the final figure in my box, one, if you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe to the channel. Clearly, you like what we're doing, and you're enjoying this look at action figure and comics history, so please do that. And if you're a fan of the channel... Don't forget, we've got merch now. This hoodie is so comfortable and so ridiculously warm. So there's a link to that both in the description and you can see the bar for all the merch that's available on our site. But I've got one more Daredevil figure that I want to share with you. And I want to give you just a little bit of a story behind it because I've been collecting action figures since I was a kid, but I've been collecting, collecting action figures since the late 90s. And it was this line of figures that really got me into full-on collecting. This is Toy Biz's Marvel's Famous Covers line. 
So these were figures in this gorgeous box packaging. But when you opened it up, you had the figure itself behind this, you know, this gold foil. You had a bio. You could see the head of the figure through here. Just great box art. And look, just like I mentioned, here's Wally Woods issue seven cover with the first appearance of Daredevil in his red costume. So that was what Toy Biz decided was the famous cover that they wanted to go with for their red Daredevil figure. And when I found this box, it's a little hard to see, but this is my original receipt from Toy Biz. I bought three different famous cover figures that day. They were $14.99 each. So back in 1998, I think the date is September 5th, 1998 where I got three famous cover figures, $14.99. You know, this figure here costs $20. Where's, where's a more recent there? Here's, here's Electra. So Electra is now in the, you know, the 20 something dollar range. This nine inch cloth costume figure was 15 bucks. And here it is. So we started this mystery box with the repro Mego figure, the look at the eight inch cloth costume figure. And now we're going to finish with Toy Biz's nine inch famous covers figure. I loved these things. I loved everything about them. They have such an incredible posability. They still have these great costumes. I mean, this figure's 23 years old. Well, he's getting a little bit of wear at his, at his mitten, but uh, that's that, that faux leather. I, it, they took a little bit of heat because they had really kind of exaggerated head sculpts, but I loved them when they were posing and they had, you know, kind of that action head sculpt. It was so, so great. And I just want to say thank you to Toy Biz for making this line. Uh, it got me online engaging with other collectors to find out what was coming next. And it really is truly just, you know, one of my absolute favorite Daredevils. So Daredevil is a phenomenal character. I am so glad that you guys got to go on this journey with me. I hope you enjoyed this mystery box. We're going to do more single character mystery boxes. And if you like those, uh, there's a, a Daredevil video that I did of his time on Frank Miller's on Frank Miller's run on the title, and then there's an entire playlist of mystery boxes. So go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the fun that's coming from Carbon Scoring.